and welcome. You're watching the news. I'm Gargi Rawat. Today, the shape of the 2024 face-off is clear with two big meetings, one in Delhi, the other in Bengaluru, the NDA and the opposition. All that and more coming up ahead. Let's take a look at the headlines we're tracking. A day of mega meetings, the NDA's 38 parties in Delhi versus the opposition's 26 in Bengaluru. As the battle lines for the 2024 elections become clear, the Prime Minister chairs the mega NDA meet with smaller allies from across the country. The alliance of 26 opposition parties that met in Bengaluru will now be known as India. The Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance with an office in Delhi and a coordination committee. Mamta Banerjee says, BJP, do you think you can defeat India? After two cheetahs in Kuno Park died within days, experts point to radio callers as a source of infection and cause of death. While the government has denied this as speculation, NDTV accesses footage that shows authorities examining the collar of a dead cheetah, wounds and maggots clearly visible. In his address to shareholders, Gautam Adani says the Hindenburg report was a deliberate malicious attempt at damaging Adani Group's reputation. He also says India is on track to be a 25 to 30 trillion dollar economy by 2050. And after causing havoc in Delhi, the water of the swollen Yamuna has reached the walls of the iconic Taj Mahal. This is after 45 years. So it was meeting versus meeting today. The BJP's mega gathering of 38 parties started this evening in Delhi at around 5 p.m. And this was just as the United Opposition meeting ended in Bengaluru with a press conference and a declaration of the name of their alliance, India. Now, the NDA meeting in Delhi is being chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Ostensibly, the meeting of the NDA is being organized to mark completion of nine years of the central government under Prime Minister Modi. And it's ahead of the monsoon session of parliament. Uh, most of the 38 parties meeting today are smaller allies with pockets of influence. Uh, the Congress, though, has been uh, questioning and uh, ha this uh, sudden revival of the NDA, questioning why suddenly this meeting after uh, they say, you can't even remember when the last time an NDA meeting was held. NDA leaders may pass a resolution on the working of the alliance. Well, let's go across to Megha now uh, for more. And Megha, tell us uh, more about uh, what's been happening at this meeting and what's happening right now. Well, the meeting is on, uh, Gargi. That's the update. But the visuals that you saw, uh, you know, at the time the Prime Minister arrived around 5 o'clock, Right after that, the lots of still pictures were shared with the media uh, from inside. Uh, it tells you a story uh, of the warmth that perhaps BJP is attempting to bring in in this meeting. The uh, pictures of hugs and handshakes tell you that story. Uh, a picture of uh, you know Chirag Paswan hugging the Prime Minister. A picture of uh, the former. The Tamil Nadu Chief Minister EPS, you know, shaking hands with Mr. Nanda. All of those pictures uh, kind of tell you that this is an attempt by the Bharatiya Janta Party and a very, uh, I would say, a serious attempt by the Bharatiya Janta Party to bring in everybody together on board, whoever wanted to become the part of the NDA. With some, of course, they're still negotiating. But those who were willingly wanting to come, the many who've come back, one party that has joined for the first time, the uh, NDA fold at this, you know, at this time, it seems to us, Gargi, is willing to take in a lot of people in their own fold. Why is that decision been taken? Because the Bharatiya Janata Party on their own have brought in 303 parliamentarians in the in the Lok Sabha. So why was there an attempt to try and go back to their alliance? 
partners, we put this question to Mr. Nadda yesterday because there seems to be a change in strategy, a change in the thinking. Uh, and he said, you know, that the Bharti Janta Party really has not gone out looking for their old alliance partners. These partners themselves wanted to come back to the NDA fold, and yes, they are very, very accepting towards that. I, I, it looks to me that you know a lot of calculations have gone into this, calculations about the seat, calculations about how uh, you know the 2024 electoral results can change in their favor if the, they have these smaller, smaller, smaller parties uh, back in their fold. Because you know the way the reason I'm saying too many small parties who are there inside together, starting from Rajbhar going on to Jitin Rao Manji, how many seats in Lok Sabha will they be able to pull for the Bharatiya Janata Party? The calculation doesn't stop there. It goes to the vote shares, it goes to the communities wherein you know their influence areas are. So BJP clearly has calculated all of that and 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 perhaps they're thinking by the looks of it, is that Modi Maria? It looks, it looks like that to us. Modi Maria, the BJP is not showing that sort of a concern in terms of, you know, people who've had charges against them, parties who they've called, quote-unquote, corrupt, sitting with them together inside today. We put that question to Mr. Nadda, and he said, well, we don't, we don't compromise with corruption at all. So those who have been facing charges or the heat of the agencies, their investigation, those cases will continue to go on, and there would be no roadblocks from the side of the Bharti Janta Party as far as investigation is concerned. So having said all of that, I think while it is also about uh, their strategy, their, uh, uh, you know, uh, seat calculations, etc. for 2024, it's also a whole lot of posturing, messaging, because right. you had the alliance, now it's called India, you know, the opposition parties coming together on the same day. So perhaps you, the way everybody sort of perceived it, it was the date of the alliance meeting in Bangalore that was decided first. The NDA meeting was to happen either today or tomorrow. Well, it happened today. So it's alliance versus alliance. And the BJP would want you to believe that they are a much bigger, a much grander and a much solid alliance because today they are celebrating the 25th year of NDA. There have yeah. been right. no parties, regional parties who were part of this NDA in the past, who've gone, some who've come back, some they are still talking to. But this alliance has stood the test of time and it is still existing. All right, I'm expecting a public uh, you know, a statement to be made, but the re clear th rethink uh, by the BJP there and an NDA uh, 38 versus opposition's 26. Well, let's talk about the meeting in uh, Bengaluru of the 26 opposition parties where Congress President Malikarjun Kharge announced the new name of the alliance, as Omega mentioned there, India, the Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance, uh, which Mamta Banerjee, in fact, said, NDA, do you think you can defeat India? While Rahul Gandhi said it would be a Modi versus India battle for 2024. Well, let's go across to V. Raghav, who's been speaking, uh, you know, to various uh, members of various parties attending that meeting today. And uh, V. Raghav, you can take us through what was decided. It, uh, they're, they're going to have an office or a secretariat in Delhi. There's going to be a meeting of a committee committee in Mumbai. Also very interesting was Malik Arjun Kharge saying the Congress is not really fixated on, you know, who will be the Prime Minister. It's more about defeating the BJP. That's right. You've pretty much summed up most of the things that happened today. So uh, you've got that. Uh, you've got the name. That's a forward movement between Patna and Bengaluru. So a concrete move forward uh, as far as the name is concerned. Forming 11 member core committee is concerned to discuss issues. A central secretariat, as you're pointing out, a common consensus on a common minimum program. Eventually, of course, they came out with a joint statement, which sort of reflects the entire mood. Uh, and as you pointed out, uh, the Congress not making its prerogative the leader of the alliance or the face of the alliance, uh, allowing that to be a matter of consensus, perhaps for a later date. Now, what that reflects also is that the target is really to take on the BJP rather than create an alliance and give clarity on how it's going to play out here. Uh, as they go forward, obviously, Gargi, the challenges will be about finding uh, those tricky states. You see, there are straightforward states where the alliances are pretty much old, historic and well settled. But there are states like a West Bengal, UP, Bihar, where it would be tricky to figure out alliances. So that would need deft handling uh, going forward. They need to figure out on who would be convener. When I spoke to Sitaram Yachuri uh, earlier in the day and said, asked him, uh, is it 
is it is there clarity that congress will be the cohesive central force he says in karnataka because they are the host it's the cohesive force in maharashtra it will be the mahavikas angadi which will be the cohesive force so uh, pretty much allies will also be looking at what their position is uh, lots of issues to come out but of course a very strong start as far as the opposition is concerned showing categorical results both in terms of names as well as in terms of uh, uh, the way forward as they head from bengaluru to mumbai the joint statement also reflective of the mood amongst the opposition parties taking on the bjp uh, the word and the terminology that you're talking about a short while ago tol tirma valman of the bck sort of narrated how it played out who proposed it uh then how it came off i think there was a lot of deliberation about that india having the name national developmental inclusive alliance a lot of thought went into that as well so yes challenges ahead for a start for opposition unity gargi all right thanks so much veer raghav for joining us uh, you know with all the details of that meeting today and let's take a look at some of the statements that were made at the press conference later i not heard the so many parties uh in india and that to 30 parties with nda bahut se tukde tukde ho gaye the wo pure tukdon ko jodne ka kaam modi ji ab kar rahe hain he is doing it now we ask ourselves what is the fight who is the fight between and we realize the fight is not between two political formations the fight is a fight to defend the idea of india and that is why we came up with the name indian national developmental inclusive alliance which also happens to stand for india nda can you challenge india bhajpa can you challenge india the other people can you challenge india we are for youth we are for student we are for farmers we are for kishans we are for dalits we are for good economy we are for the country aaj ye 26 partiyan hum sab log apne liye ekatrit nahi hue hum desh ko ek taraf bachana hai jis tarah se pure desh ke andar nafrat phailai ja rahi hai usse bachana hai aur dusri taraf ek naye bharat ka sapna leke hum sab log ikatthe hue hain jahan pe aisa bharat hoga jahan sab sukh shanti hogi pyar mohabbat hogi aur desh tarakki karega jaise ek zamane mein azadi ki ladai hui thi तो अब आजादी खतरे में आई है तो इस आजादी के लिए हम सब इकट्ठा आए हैं और पक्का भरोसा है कि हम कामयाब रहेंगे हो जाएंगे और देश की जनता के मन में एक डर है कि अब क्या होगा तो हम इतना उनको एक एहसास दिलाना चाहते हैं कि विश्वास दिलाना चाहते हैं डरो मत हम है All right, moving away from politics now to the cheetah conservation plan, and eight cheetahs have died in Madhya Pradesh's Kuno National Park since the project began to reintroduce them. Uh, the last two cheetahs died within a matter of days. Now, some experts are attributing the latest deaths to substandard radio collars given to the animals, though the government has denied the charges as speculation and hearsay without scientific evidence. Well, now NDTV has accessed pictures of the injuries and larva on the cheetah's neck. Forest officials examining the radio collar and a maggot infested wound on the neck of Cheeta Suraj who died last week. All the cheetahs in Kuno have on wildlife tracking radio collars from Africa where they were brought from. But the equipment is now being questioned by several experts as it's not suited to Indian conditions. Na me, matlab we faced all these issues. Mhm. बट uh, हम लोगों की ऑब्जर्वेशन का जो रेजीम है दैट वाज क्वाइट टाइट लिटरली 24 7 का मतलब 24 7 वो भी वो कॉलर सिंथेटिक है इमीडिएटली दे नीड टू बी रिप्लेस्ड इनिशियली इट मे बी सॉफ्ट बट विद टाइम उसकी पॉलिमराइजेशन हो जाता है तो टाइट हो जाता है बट इन केस इट इज अ लेदर देन लेदर विल स्टार्ट ऑब्जॉर्ब सोकिंग द वाटर एंड देन स्टार्ट मतलब उसकी इलास्टिसिटी मतलब बढ़ जाती है ओके okay. and it exactly doesn't harm that much according to a source after suraj's death another cheeta pavan was tranquilized and his radio collar was removed potentially saving his life as flies already led eggs in his wound on his neck if the cheeta was not treated the maggot infestation could have resulted in pavan's death 
The National Tiger Conservation Authority in its press release dated on the 16th of July had stated, out of the 20 translocated adult cheetahs, five mortalities of adult cheetahs have been reported from Kuno National Park. And as per the preliminary analysis, all mortalities are due to natural causes. There are reports in the media attributing cheetah deaths due to radio callers, etc. Such reports are not based on any scientific evidence, but on speculation and hearsay. But then on the 17th of July, the government transferred the principal chief conservator of forests, J.S. Johan, who is in charge of the project, while the callers still remain. A few days earlier, Mr. Chauhan had spoken to NDTV about shifting some cheetahs to other areas. We do have plans to, to make uh, second home, then third home uh, for cheetahs. Right now, we have uh, cheetahs, all our cheetahs are in Kuno. So the situation is like uh, having all your eggs in one basket. So we basically uh, need to explore other areas, other suitable areas. Now Kuno is left with 15 adult cheetahs, 11 of them in open jungles and four in enclosures and one cub. With Anurag Dwari in Bhopal, Gargi Rawat for NDTV. In other news, Gautam Adani, founder and chairman of Adani Group, today addressed shareholders where he said the Hindenburg report was a deliberate, malicious attempt at damaging Adani Group's reputation. He also said that India is set to be a $25 trillion economy by 2050. On a day when the Sensex surpassed the 67,000 mark for the first time ever and the Nifty breached the 19,800 mark for the first time, Adani Group shares also zoomed significantly after Gautam Adani said India is set to be a 25 to 30 trillion dollar economy by 2050 and India's stock market capitalization is set to cross 40 trillion dollars by 2050. This essentially means a trillion dollars to India's GDP every 18 months. Within the next decade, India will start adding a trillion dollar to its GDP every 18 months. This puts us on track to be a 25 to 30 trillion dollar economy by 2050 and will drive India's stock market capitalization to over 40 trillion dollars, approximately a 10x expansion from the current levels. Speaking at the Adani Group's annual general meeting, chairman of the Adani Group, Gautam Adani said, Adani Group companies have set new financial performance records in FY22-23 and has seen total income spike as much as 85% and profit after tax surge 82%. The group's balance sheet, assets and operating cash flows continue to get stronger and are now healthier than ever before. Your group will continue to consolidate what it has built while looking at expanding its horizons. The Adani group is set to play a critical role in India's net zero journey. Adani Green Energy Gautam Adani also said the Hindenburg report was a combination of targeted misinformation and discredited allegations also stated that the expert committee did not find any regulatory failure. The report was a combination of a targeted misinformation and discredited allegations. The majority of them dating from 2004 to 2015. They were all settled by appropriate authorities at that time. The expert committee did not find any regulator failure, while SEBI is still to submit its report. We remain confident of our governance and disclosure standards. Even as the Adani Group chairman reiterated resilience as the characteristic that has defined the group over three decades and the world is battling climate change concerns and geopolitical challenges 
analysts remain upbeat on India's economy going forward. Sakshi Bajaj for NDTV. And go across to where the Prime Minister are. Uh, there you can see this is after the meeting of the NDA and all the partners, 38 parties held today, which was chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Well, that meeting has now has ended, it seems, and we're expecting a statement to be made soon. So there you can see the Prime Minister posing with all the various leaders of smaller parties who are a part of the NDA. So a show of strength. And remember, we've been reporting all day about how it's a meeting versus meeting with the opposition's meet in Bengaluru. And that was something that had been announced much earlier. Uh, but And then you had this announcement of the NDA meeting, or rather show of strength. Uh, today evening. In fact, the NDA meeting began just as uh, the opposition meeting and that opposition alliance is now called India. These are uh, visuals of uh, earlier when the Prime Minister had arrived and there was a, a photo op there, as you can see, uh, the Prime Minister and there uh, uh, also hugging uh, Chirag Paswan. So uh, that was uh, one of those moments that was caught on camera and this uh, bonhomie or warmth between uh, all, all the NDA uh, members and Prime Minister Modi, they're greeting all of them ahead of this meeting.